Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks video. Today we'll be looking at a gameplay I got while playing the Halo 4 playlist inside Halo the Master Chief Collection. This is going to be a Team Infinity Slayer gameplay on the map of Drift. This means you can use your loadouts and it's going to be to 60 kills. It's 5v5 Slayer on the Drift. So I'm going to be telling you my, from start to finish, what I'm thinking during the game, why I'm doing the things I'm doing, hopefully giving you a crash course on how to play a drift. Now off the start here, I am loading out with mobility, which allows me to sprint infinitely, and I'm loading out with ammo, so that if I pick up a power weapon, then I have extra ammo for it, and I have extra ammo for my weapons that I load out with. So, off the start here, this is what the route you're going to want to use. You're going to sprint here, and continue sprinting all the way over here, you're going to jump, and you're going to get to the overshield. I did stutter a little bit there, but that's okay. Once you grab the overshield, this should be ahead of any other players grabbing the overshield. And the reason I always go for the overshield first off the start is that, as you can see in my HUD, there are two snipers. One over here in this corner and one over here in this corner. What you can do is grab the overshield and immediately drop and get behind anyone who has run from their base to the sniper. So you can see that two enemy players are already going for the sniper, actually. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop behind them with this overshield and try to get them from behind. You can see another player yet again runs past me here. Now, I have an overshield, so I'm going to charge these guys pretty heavily off the start, but my shots are really sloppy. So I'm going to back up, cutting off my angles, get the double kill, and allow my teammate to clean up that guy. Now, I want to back up here and really show very carefully what I did and why I did it. The Halo 4 Overshield is not that powerful, really at all. So you have to be very careful while using it. So I come up here and I'm putting shots on this guy. Now my shots get really sloppy here and I start missing pretty bad. And I can see that this guy has a sniper rifle looking at me and this guy has Promethean Vision. That's why his, his helmet is flashing like this because he's using Promethean Vision. You can see that red dot there. So not only do they know where I am, but I have three people looking at me and likely nades are coming in and I only have half an overshield left. At this point, it really would take only one sniper bullet and a few well-placed placed headshots to kill me. And just for the sake of argument, the guy behind me on my radar, um, he is actually in the attic above me. And the way you can tell that, um, that he is in the attic above me right here, the way you can tell that as I switch back to my player POV and you can see my radar is because there's a red arrow above the dot on the bottom of my radar. What that signifies is that he is above me. That's why I know this player isn't directly behind me about to assassinate me right now. The same thing goes for players who are below you. There'll be a red dot, a red arrow, should I say, in the bottom of the dot of the player who's below you. So, as you can see here, I'm vastly outclassed. So I'm going to back up around this corner, cutting off my angles. Now, what this allows me to do is, obviously, I'm not going to be able to fire very well at these players while I'm backing up like this. But what I can do is I can throw a grenade and force them to come around the corner. See, they don't see me anymore. So all three of them are going to kind of move to this side into my grenade as I nade up this ramp. Now, a lot of noob players would throw the grenade over here past these guys. This is not what you want to do. You want to bounce the grenade off of this ramp, as you see me do right here. And it's going to bounce into them as they come around here. That's a really well-timed nade as I back up and headshot that guy and get the other guy one shot. All right? And I'm going to get the double kill here, throw another grenade, and it's going to nade this other guy who drops the sniper rifle. Now, I immediately turn and run the opposite direction. You may be wondering, why didn't I go for that sniper? Well, I knew my teammates who are already all over that area are going to go for it. But on a drift, you really, really, if you're going to maximize your kills, you want to be staying well away from your teammates. And this will make much more sense as I go through this film and carefully explain my thought process. My thought process is I have to flank the enemy player. So right now I'm crouching and being very careful because all these players are on my radar. And I'm pulling out my bolt shot because I might have to bolt shot someone. Now this is a dumb play I make right here. It's not the fact that I crouched and waited too long. It's the fact that I'm charging out into the open when I know they're going to have the other sniper rifle because we didn't go for that sniper rifle. This is pretty important. And what's strange to note here is that the sniper rifle that this guy has, uh, when he shoots me, it actually doesn't even register um, the sound. I'll actually back it up here right as he shoots me. Uh, the sound of the sniper rifle wishing and um, 
or whooshing, should I say, and hitting your head and getting the headshot. It's very iconic, and it didn't register there, either in the game itself or the film you're watching now. So right now, I'm watching my radar very carefully, and I notice very briefly off my spawn, right here, you can see on my radar that this guy is over here okay or somewhere over here and I know he's there because I just spawned and I just saw that you got to be watching your radar very very carefully on a drift now I think that he may have just crouched because he saw me on my radar so I crouch a little bit and then I'm gonna try to um, sprint over to where he is I noticed my teammate died here but I can tell that these players are using Promethean vision you can see the kind of the red waves that are crossing over my radar right here in the bottom left that red wave indicates that this player is using Promethean Vision, so they know where I am regardless of whether I'm crouching or not. However, that red wave does not seem to be coming from these players right here. It seems to be coming from these guys over here. You can see that other guy was using that helmet before early in the film. So I know that I can basically surprise these other players. But this other guy tries to charge around the corner. I almost premunate him. He almost outshoots me. My shot is pretty sloppy. I haven't played Halo 4 in a bit. This is a great place to hide in this tunnel right here. You can crouch down and hide behind here. You can see that if I were to walk past it from this perspective, you would not be able to tell where I was. You can see that um, I'm just kind of hiding in the corner here just to regenerate my shields because your shields do take a little bit longer to uh, regenerate in Halo 4. So I'm going to try this strategy again, hoping that these guys have uh, not found out where I was. Now, I want to pause the film right here and rewind and show you guys the hit markers that show up on my screen right here. Um, these hit markers indicate whether you have done damage to an enemy player, and they're kind of hard to see, and they pop up very, very briefly. This indicates that I did damage this player with my grenade, but it doesn't matter whether it's my grenade or weapon. It really doesn't matter what I'm using on the enemy player. If I get damage on the enemy player, these hit markers will appear. Now, this is really kind of lame because in theater mode, if I were to actually go back and show you this in theater mode as I am going to do right now, if I throw this grenade around the corner, the hit markers do not appear again when I rewind the film and show you the grenade explosion again. I have no idea why this is. This is a, actually a glitch that appears in theater mode along with another glitch that appears in theater mode where on top of these flaming towers, uh, there are no flames. This is just a random glitch in theater mode. In the actual gameplay, there are flames on top of these towers. And don't ask me why blue base spawns in the clearly flaming red and red piped base. I don't know why blue team spawns in that base at the beginning. I really don't know why. But anyway, that's a little bit of a side topic. Back to the film. So I come around here. I nade this guy around the corner because I know he's here on my radar. He's weak. He Promethean visions me again, so he knows where I am. But he's staying still, which is not a good idea. My teammate nades him from behind, and I get the assist. Now, I, I hear on my HUD that there are players down this hallway, okay? And this is the advantage of using a surround sound headset. You can see that this player briefly poked out here, probably using a sniper rifle. Now, the reason I lift over here and don't charge down the hallway is not because I know this player for sure has a sniper rifle. I didn't know that, actually. But because I want to get to this player very fast, and I want to flank him from a direction he's not going to be expecting. And I want you to notice, as I come over the lift, this guy probably is zooming and isn't watching his radar. When you're zooming with a sniper rifle, you can't see your radar. So I lift over behind this guy who doesn't even know I'm here. I, I am able to take him out from behind and kill him, and I'm able to get this sniper rifle, or almost get it, but a guy cleans me up from the other side of the map. It actually ends up killing my teammate here. So my teammate get the sniper rifle, that's great. Now I want you to notice my what I do here. This is very important. I run the absolute opposite direction of my teammate with sniper. Because I know that they are over there on the opposite side of the map, or somewhere over there. If I were to charge out in the center right now, they know we're over here. Okay. I need to go around the side of the map get get on these other f alternate flanking angles and shoot them from the side and get on one of their sides hoping my teammates will do the same thing here this is part of the reason i load out with infinite mobility sprint on this map is because i can sprint for a very long time without running out of sprint now my teammate goes over the lift unfortunately and actually ends up falling off the map and i want to guy actually show you guys this um, never use a thruster pack in mid lift while you're going over the lift and also while you're when you're going to the lift make sure you go through the center of the lift okay go into the center of the lift like this do not hug the wall 
okay? Because any friction you have against the wall will cause you to not make it to the other side and die. I, I c cover this very, very carefully in my thruster pack tutorial video, which I'll link at the end of this video. The thruster pack does not carry you farther in a direction and only carries you faster along the trajectory you're already going to be traveling. Now, I'm going to be very careful here because I know these players are right here around the corner. I get, inst I get naded around the corner. So I'm going to turn and just run. There's no point in trying to attack these players. Now, I would like you to very carefully watch what I do here. I peek around the corner, and I'm expecting more than one player. Sure enough, there is more than one player. And so as I'm going to fade to the, around this corner to my right, I'm going to throw a grenade. And this is a really nice strategy because as you're throwing the grenade, you can kind of move to the right and curve your nade around the wall, so to speak. It's not that your nade is actually curving its trajectory. It's just that you're using that movement as you move behind the wall to do something instead of not firing. So this nade hits these guys really, really well. But I'm really weak, and I can see my teammates are engaged with this other player, and we actually end up pinching this guy. This is a really, really good uh, move on my teammates' part and our part. You want to be pinching these enemy players on a drift, especially when you have a radar. You can easily tell when you're outnumbered. As you saw me do over here, I saw that I was outnumbered and possibly about to die, so I backed up, tried to help my teammate. Now, I want you to notice very carefully what I do here. This is how you use the lifts on a drift. Obviously not dying, of course, and using the lift correctly, but more specifically for map movement traversal. I'm not lifting just because I want to get out of this area. I'm lifting because I know players are in this tunnel and are headed towards me. So I'm going to lift behind them and get some good angles on them. Notice the three dots on my radar as I lift over. You need to be watching your radar when you lift over very carefully so you know where players are. It gives you a kind of snapshot perspective. And all three of these red dots have an arrow below them, so I know that these three players are in the tunnel below me right here as I cross over. So I'm going to go over and get behind them, obviously not thruster packing. I'm going to put a few shots on these players trying to um, kill them off. I don't have any grenades, unfortunately enough. I'll try to be calling it out because I know my face cam is covering the grenades kind of in the top left corner. So I'm charging those hallway. Now I know my two teammates are here, but I see this red dot. So I'm going to try to help my teammate out right here. This, my teammate does an amazing job of being very aggressive with his thruster pack and thruster packing away and past the grenade. This is a great job and I should have done this or should have done this more in the film, frankly. So I'm able to clean up as my teammate gets a really good distraction there. have a lot of ammo for my battle rifle, 198 bullets. That's because I'm using ammo, and it's a really good job to do so. So right now, it's 20 kills to 12 right now, and I'm going to charge into the attic. Now, you may be wondering, why did I do this? Well, my teammates are in this bottom tunnel, two of them actually, so it would be pointless for me to charge with them as well. One of my te two of my teammates are kind of across the map, probably engaging players on their own. So I'm going to try to use their distraction, maybe get around players. Um, maybe I might be able to help my teammate who's over here on the right uh, in this tunnel, and maybe I can uh, actually run around here and get a flank. This is kind of what I'm thinking. This may not actually be what occurs in the film, but this is kind of what I'm thinking, and I see my teammate died here, so I'm going to go, okay, the overshield's up. I know my teammate just grabbed that, but I see this guy charging the attic on my radar. This is a really important guy to take out as me and my teammate absolutely melt this guy. It's a, a pretty well-known call to call a uh, two teammates shooting someone or three teammates shooting someone. You call that a melt when you get the kill because it happens very, very quickly. Now, I want you to notice my map movement here. I notice this guy below me on my radar who is going through uh, their bottom tunnel here. Okay. Now, I'm going to try to flank him from behind because I know that this sniper rifle is up right here, and he's going to try to be contesting it with my teammate. Now, I'd like you to point, to point out that when I'm maneuvering in third person, the radar is not accurate. It doesn't maneuver with me. So I actually have to go into first person to show you how accurate the radar is, and then the radar starts to move in the bottom left-hand corner. This is another glitch in theater mode that I fail to understand why. Uh, I guess, you know, hashtag 3 for 3 logic on Twitter and get that trending, if you know what I mean. Um, yeah, so I'm charging into this tunnel now. This is very important. Okay, this is really important. This enemy player lifts. Okay, the reason I know that this player lifts, you can watch very carefully on my radar as I'm going over here, is that this red dot on my radar is has an arrow above it, which means that this guy is lifting over. He's also moving way too quickly, and he's not in this tunnel, obviously. Now, this is what I want you to note. I know a teammate's behind me, but I'm not going to assume my teammate 
is going to be able to take care of this guy. You know, don't want to assume that. You want to try to help your teammate as much as possible, but more importantly, we don't want to get pinched. So here's what I want to propose to you. If this guy lifts over and kills my teammate, I'm going to be stuck between between this enemy player and two other players down this hallway, or three other players down this hallway. That's bad. I get pinched and I die. So I want you to notice what I do here, and I also want you to notice the unawareness of my teammate here, as, and this is not necessarily bad, but this person is zooming with their sniper rifle, so this person can't view their radar, okay? Um, typically, this is not the best place to snipe. You want to be sniping in this hallway, looking across, and actually, I'll, I'll save that for another portion of the film, because I actually get the sniper rifle, and I'll show you there. So I turn around, and I'm going to help my teammate, and my teammate gets cleaned up, because he or she was not watching their radar. So now, I have the sniper rifle. So I'm going to try to play this very passive and use of sniping angles that I talked about here. So I immediately switch targets here, and you're probably going, why in the world would I do that? Well, let me explain to you. So now I've picked up the sniper rifle, and I'm going to explain to you why I switch targets so quickly here. As I move into the tunnel, I can see that there's this one guy weak. So I try to get the headshot on this guy, but it doesn't register as a headshot. Okay, This guy is one shot, and it's clearly reloading. He has his weapon straight up in the air. That means he's reloading. But I notice immediately that this guy is over here. This guy behind him has a sniper rifle. I have to take him out immediately, which is what I do. I headshot him, body shot this guy for the double kill. This guy is already kind of weak, so I jump on top of the box to kill him. This is actually a really good use of the box movement strategy here to get this triple kill. Now I'm use looking across at the other hallway. This is oftentimes where enemy players will be. I'm looking at this hallway mainly because my three teammates are over there. You can see the three blue arrows. So I know that they might be in this other hallway, and I highly doubt they'd spawn behind me in the base that I was just in. Now there is one player over here who I do see who pushed over from the lower hallway. Now this is a great use of the sniper rifle zoom in Halo 4. This is one of the reasons why Halo 4 is one of the easier sniper rifles to snipe with, is because you can do this, literally wait till the enemy comes around the corner and just shoot them in the head. Now, I want you to notice how I didn't really do anything there. I just literally waited for the player to move over. This is one of the reasons why you probably want to jump when you're running around corners like this, so you don't get headshot by sniper rifles. Promethean visioning sniper, sniper rifle uh, usage is very common on this map. So I get two body shots on this guy for the killing frenzy. Now I want to back up here just a little bit so you guys can sh see what I did here. Right here, I want you to notice the red arrow on the left side of my HUD, okay? This is indicating that I just got shot from my left side by this guy. Now, typically speaking, you don't want to try to engage someone with a sniper rifle who already knows where you are because they're going to shoot you and cause you to flinch upwards. It's going to be very hard to aim. So what I do is I just cut off the angle and just move forward a little bit so that he won't be able to hit me. And I know that I have a teammate behind me, so I'm just going to hope that my teammate can keep that guy at bay for now while I zoom in on this opposite tunnel where my teammate just died. And I'm gonna That really pays off because I'm actually going to get this kill for the killing frenzy. I do end up getting naded by this guy, but he charges out into the center and my teammate's able to chase him from the other side. That's why I did that there, just to explain my thought process. I see this guy who's uh, killing my, or shooting my teammate across the map. So I get the quick headshot there to protect him. I'm going to move up here into the top center, trying to sense where they are on my radar. That's the main usage here. Now, I want you to notice what I did here, okay? I noticed that my teammate died over here because I saw the red X, and I noticed uh, Dax over here. She's in the tunnel looking out, probably at multiple players. So I'm going to try to flank through the attic and get behind these players. Once again, this is just using flanking roots. Now, I pause here, and I'm going to try to snipe people in the body as much as I can. You don't have to get headshots at this point. Because I'm above players and looking down, it's not crucial that I wait for the perfect headshot. My teammate is in dire need of help here, so I need to try to kill these players as fast as possible. So I get the body shot, and I'm able to get the double kill. My teammate dies before I can get to her, and I get the triple kill. So I have two sniper rifle bullets left. It's 37 points to 20 with our blue team leading and I'm in this base right now so that means probably mo not many people are going to spawn here so I'm pushing over here to my teammates because I have two sniper rifle bullets and I'm hoping to look down this hallway give them some cover fire but it looks like they have those guys already taken care of now I'd like to point out here this is a really sloppy shot that I have with the sniper rifle this is uh, basically I'm trying to quick scope this player but I definitely miss Okay, because I switched, I, uh, should I say, flicked my aimer to the right as I tried to whip over and shoot him. This is not a good idea. So I have one sniper rifle bullet remaining, 
and I want you to notice very carefully what I do with it here. Now Halo 4 is kind of easier to get no scopes or snapshots, but this is a very good usage of this last bullet as I simply move, I simply move over and boom, get this guy in the head as it goes over and we'll, I can actually slow this down for you here. Boom, I get the snapshot for the running riot, 15 kills in a row without dying. We kill this guy right here, clearly he is dead, okay? And, uh, for whatever reason, my teammate decides to shoot not at his dead body, but at me, and kills me, okay? Now, that's very clear from behind right here what occurred. Uh, you can see here that this guy dies, and then, as he dies, my teammate just decides to shoot me in the back. This is our random player. Now, I'm going to assume this player I didn't really know what he or she was doing. Now, I would like to point out that betrayal, it doesn't say betrayal because the enemy player put more damage on me. When an enemy player puts damage on you and then your teammate kills you, it doesn't count as a betrayal. It counts as the enemy player killing you. So, I'm going to lift over here, and this is something where I really need to break down the film here. I'll let it play normally so you guys can see what happens here. Um, as I get the double kill and uh, then the triple kill here, then I'm going to get the over, and then the kill tacular. Now I'm going to slow this portion of the film down very carefully so you guys can see what's going on. All right. As I come off the respawn here, I'm actually going to zoom through this death really fast. As I come off the respawn here, I know that I just died in this area, but that my teammates are going to probably get pushed here. So I, I hear a bunch of fire on my um, Asteroid 40, my surround sound headset. So I know that they're going to be over here. Now I'm mainly moving to this position because I know I can move into the attic if I need to and flank from another side. So I lift over to my teammates and I can see this guy immediately lift over. So I'm going to team shot him and get the assist here. I'm going to kill this other guy. There's two more lifted over so we get the double kill here. Now this is a great grenade, okay? This grenade bounces off this wall, and this covers this guy from behind. If he were to back up, which he does, this grenade will bank off this wall and land right here on the floor, which is exactly what happens, okay? So I bank this grenade off the wall, and I end up getting the triple kill with that grenade, and now I'm going to move in with help from my teammates, get this guy for the overkill, and get this guy for the kill tacular. Now you may have been wondering, how did I get the kill tacular so easy on that guy? Well. Uh, embarrassingly enough, we are not playing against the most highest quality of players. And you can see that when this guy actually throws this grenade, he literally chunks this grenade off of his teammate and uh, actually nades himself uh, and loses almost all of his shields. So that's what actually happens here. That's actually how I get to kill Tacular. I just want to be honest here. That's not due to any uh, any skill of mine. And I, if I had an extra grenade, I might have been able to pre-nade that guy and get the kill Trocity. But really, that's just kind of awareness on my part, kind of being ready there. I just stopped to record the film here. But uh, that really just comes from good shots and good grenades. I'm going to go immediately for the overshield top center here. As I can see that these other players don't have it. I'm going to immediately charge these guys. But, and this is a really bad mistake that you guys should learn from on my part, the needler will absolutely destroy your overshield. It will kill you and your overshield on top of that. And that's exactly what ends up happening here. As soon as I saw that this player had a Needler, I should have immediately thruster packed. Immediately. It doesn't matter whether he has a good angle or not. I need to thruster pack to avoid uh, being uh, killed by him and be any amount of needles. Because the once a certain amount of needles are in you, you super combine and it explodes. It's basically a grenade explosion on you that will kill you or take away all your overshield. So I should have thruster packed to my right. I would have dropped all the way down here and been able to go up this lift and up here. But I didn't do that and this is a very bad mistake as you can see the needler absolutely melts me. It's a great way to take down the overshield. It's one of the few uses for the needler. It's so easy to do dodge the needler on this map especially when you have the thruster pack. So this film is kind of nearing its conclusion. I can see that these players kind of charged out Rashman into the center so I'm going to get some team shots on these guys. Now I want you guys to notice what I try to do here. Because my teammate is above me Okay, right now, I know that this player is above me on this area. I know that he or she is probably going to charge over here, like this teammate is doing, and I want to flank these players on my radar from a different angle. Once again, it's just flanking on a drift. That's really all you have to do. But I get prenated around the corner. Now, you may be wondering, how in the world did this guy know to prenade me? Look at my radar. He's using Promethean Noob Vision. That's what I call it because it's a really, really cheap way of getting grenade and sniper kills because you can see players through the map. Promethean Noob Vision. 
Hashtag three for three logic on Twitter. Okay, I'll I'll stop now. So I'm going to run around this corner and try to flank these guys once again from the side. Now, I know that this player is a sniper rifle. When you see a guy sitting right here, standing still, he's likely going to have a sniper. But I know, like I was doing earlier in the film and I actually didn't mention, uh, this player is likely going to be aiming right here. Okay, He's going to be aim zooming right here where my head's going to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to jump out over that and throw a grenade okay now this is a really really solid grenade you want to try to aim your grenades as far back as possible without hitting the roof which is exactly what i did i can actually rewind and show you here i see these players going to jump out over his sniper shot which misses me and then i'm going to nade down the corner nade over these little boxes this is a really good strategy on a drift to be behind the boxes and nade past them. I end up getting the assist and we're able to clean up this sniper rifle guy and my teammate for the doctor runs in uh, for this last kill. Now the main reason I uploaded this film was not because of the enemy, the skill of the enemy players we were facing, but because I got 27 kills compared to my teammates. And my teammates were wondering, how in the world did I do that? So that's an, that's uh, hopefully it will help you learn how to play Adrift better in Halo 4. Uh, thank you for watching this video. And I have a few other videos to link you at the end here. So I have three videos to link you at the end here. In the top right hand corner annotation, you're going to see a link to my ultimate thruster pack armor ability guide in Halo 4. Pretty lengthy in-depth video, highly recommend it. In the bottom right hand corner, you're going to see a guide that details the opening rush starting strategies on all Halo 4 team Slayer maps. And right below my face came in the bottom left hand corner you're going to see another video i spent a very lengthy amount of time on it's actually a gameplay set to music with a little bit of editing i come back alone on my team in big team battle with no teammates because they've all quit and i actually end up winning the game so that's there for your convenience or your viewing enjoyment if you did like this video or want to see more videos from me click the golden subscribe button and those videos will appear on your feed please leave this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it as it does help other people find it and i'll see you on the next capture or whatever i end up recording Peace, guys.